What's up, YouTube? Homegrown Big coming at you from. Yeah. That's where I built my sauna. Nice little deck area, potted stuff, fireplace, little place to eat, outdoor plunge shower, little waterfall. Pretty nice, yeah? All right, we had to move into the sauna. This time of day is commuter hour, and although it's not very loud on this property, there's something about this camera that like magnifies any sounds of vehicles on the road or in the air, so it kind of limits my uh, my filming. And maybe someday when I actually make it a priority, I actually will get a lapel mic. Um, but for now, this is what we have, and not such a bad backdrop. Uh, this sauna was probably one of the best things that I ever did for my health. Oh, so good. I love the, the sauna lifestyle. Been a long time since I put out a video. And exactly what I was saying uh, in my previous vlogs, that I was getting pretty busy with the food project here and the growing season, and now we're starting to wind down. Um, I should be, have a little bit of time to get a few more videos in, um, and I'll do some season recap videos. I've basically at this point filled up an entire... Uh, freezer with uh, foods I've produced here, 100% chemical free, 100% uh, free of single use packaging, so I don't use a food saver at all. Um, and I'm filling up a second half freezer, so that should be, I put in 12 more quarts this weekend. Um, it'll be filled up here shortly. And then I gotta figure out the next storage thing. I've got some canning left to do. Um, but I'm going to be getting probably some elk from a friend, so some good wild game. And we're going to be pretty stocked up for the winter. You know, people have asked me for more videos around the permaculture, around the, you know, food forest stuff here. And, and I'm just sorry, I don't have that time budget. Um, people have asked me what I do with my life, how I make money. And, and uh, suffice to say that I run management in a Fortune 500 company. And I often work 10 to 12 hour days and I do the food forest here and I train for competitive powerlifting and I have family and friends. So my time allotment, my time budget for YouTube is like this big right now. So I'm sorry, um, maybe that'll change in the future. And I certainly have aims at wanting to be able to share more of my knowledge. But um, if it doesn't make me money, I, I can't really put that much time in it. You know, I've got to save that time for um, my other priorities, which are, you know, reducing my food footsteps, uh, footprints, and, um, you know, prioritizing my family. So there's that. The rest of this vlog is going to be kind of about my thoughts and experiences about all of the ex-vegan things that are going on in the community right now, as well as a meat recap. So it's been... Um, really really interesting and I and there's been a lot of videos that I've actually like commentary I've wanted to do but I just like I said I haven't had time watching all of this transpire with all of these big names you know vegetable police and that lady raw mom I don't even know who she is but 15 years vegan you know put on the good face I'm always so healthy and happy and here's my vegan family but behind the scenes I'm sick and I'm going to the hospital and I feel like I'm dying I, these stories are surfacing over and over and over again you know Tim Sheaf I'm gonna get into him about him in a second but I mean you, all you have to do is put on YouTube why I quit veganism now and there's just like thousands and thousands and thousands of video of people who've been vegan long term who carried the torch who spread the message who did activism who um were voted PETA's sexiest vegan like really predominant community members are finally coming out and saying yeah I didn't feel that great yeah I can't continue to do that because my health matters and this goes along with what I've said that like you'll be happy to s to spread that vegan message until your health is so bad that you can't and there's a few people who think that they're willing to exchange their health for the wellness or welfare of animals and it tends to go until they get to the very ends of the ropes of their health and then the light bulb goes off 
And it, it, it heartens me to see people being so transparent and to actually come out and tell their truth and tell their story. And I hope that in some weird way that I had a little bit to do with that. Um, just a tiny little bit. There's been others before me and there were others after, I'm sure, who were much more influential. But the willingness to not be bullied by vegans, to not back down in the face of adversity from vegans, um, and to endure the harassment and the absolute um, tyranny of the vegan community. And I mean, it's even with stuff like vegan saying, if you're not a vegan now, you never were a vegan. And this is a clear indicator of kind of the, um, the cognitive dissonance as a term vegans love to use turned in on themselves because they can't come to terms with the fact that other people's experiences don't fit their narratives and their belief systems. And that's a really huge, like psychological chasm that has to be dealt with. Uh, and the rewriting. So by saying like by dying, by denying that somebody was ever vegan, the people, these vegans are ostensibly trying to rewrite someone's vegan history, which is dangerous and absolute garbage by my metric. Um, and it doesn't sit well with me. So you can call me whatever you want, but I identify as an ex-vegan, okay? And you can't take that from me. You're not allowed to take that from me. That is my history, and my story lives whether or not you're trying to rewrite my history, okay? So moving on from that, it absolutely, like, does not shock me that these people who are coming out of the woodwork now are saying things like, oh yeah, well I was feeling terrible and I was putting on a good face and I was every now and then trying some like eggs or some fish or some like fish oil tablets. Man, this has been going on forever. I've been saying this for like half a, half a decade. <laughs> I've been hearing these stories behind the scenes from people and I pride myself in being keeping people's confidence and there's been people who've come to me who've talked to me when they've had problems and they've just been having vegan um, businesses or vegan names that were very popular and just being like, oh my God, I, I need help. I, you've got to help me. I want to stay vegan. What can I do? It's been going on forever. I mean, this is, as I've said before, the revolving door of veganism. And veganism will never take real hold because we're just not physiologically designed for it. There's going to be, of course, a few people who genetically are at the end of the spectrum, you know, the bell curve. And I've talked about this before, where there's a little spectrum of people who do okay, a little spectrum of people who do really, really horribly, and then like some variance in between with a median in here. And that median in there is a huge group of people who do well, starting out in veganism, get really excited about it, spread the message, and then in about year six or seven, start to fade. And they either go down really fast or they hold on till 10 years, 11, somewhere around there. But we look at what's going on with Tim Sheaf right now, and I really feel for this guy. Um, Tim is a really interesting example of veganism by by my metric um, because he's an elite athlete. He's a world, world class, or was, pardon me, a world class elite athlete. I don't, I don't think he can say that he is anymore. Um, and then he started experimenting with veganism and had a couple of years where and this is typical, most people report this, where he had actually very good results and maybe even a little faster recovery or a little less inflammation or something like this along the way. It's a little, a little more energy that allowed them to even um, notch up their athletics a little bit higher. So then that reinforces their ideology that the veganism has... Um, made their athletics better, not that it's the uh, sort of fasting state that veganism is causing in their body. Essentially, they're, uh, you know, they're eating their own body, they're metabolizing their own body, and that's, that's fasting. That's what fasting is. That goes for a while, and then the stored nutrients dry up, then, then there's problems. And I just want to point this out. Like, if you look at, uh, and this is something that I've said to other people, 
on social media, the thing that really concerns me is you look at somebody who starts fruitarianism or veganism and their eyes are here in their head and then over time their eyes start to sink back. And you can see this in Tim in just four or five years. Let me be very clear. When your eyes are sinking so back far into your head that your brow profile does this, you're eating your brain. You're literally metabolizing and eating your brain. You're eating your brain fat. You're eating your brain. Your body is so starved for nutrients that you are eating your brain. And, you know, this is where a lot of, like, if you don't even think about that, too, when you go that far, your body is supposed to have a, an actually a fair amount of fat around the organs. All animals have that as protection. When you start seeing those rib cages get thinner and thinner and thinner, you're eating your organ protection. You're eating your organs. This should concern you, <laughs> right? This should concern you. It's just not healthy. It's not sustainable. So I've been seeing this and just really wanting to do a response but not having the time. But of course this is happening. This is a no-brainer. Duh. And I've had a lot of people argue with me, well, why don't you debate with these docs, you know, these four doctors that are promoting veganism, maybe five now, and we'll see, like, they're, they've got this doctor thing. Okay, fine. You know, but there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of doctors that are prescribing different regimens, completely animal-based, and also having success. Okay, so because there is this small group of doctors over here that are doing something different, yeah, their phenomena should be observed. It should be tested and it should be looked at without question, but there's not enough body of evidence to show that that is what supports human health and that's how we should be as a species. No way. No way. That's another whole conversation. So I could go off on that, but that's a tangent. So in my post-vegan gains, um, I showed the last, my first powerlifting meet. I let you all know that I was getting ready for a second powerlifting meet. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that and some experiences I had, especially like I did some dry fasting, which was pretty interesting. Um, so this last meet I did August 4th was the IPL International Powerlifting League World Record Breakers uh, meet in Portland. And um, that was a super good experience for me. So I uh, compete in the USPA, which is the United States Powerlifting Association. But the IPL is their sister organization that keeps international records. And this was a meet where um, regional lifters could go and it was sanctioned to to break world records. So there was a very high caliber of lifters there compared to some of the local meets here. And it was a really great experience for me. Uh, coming into this meet, I trained really hard and my training was going super great. Um, and then I had some stuff come up at work literally like 10 days before the meet. And I was working extremely, extremely hard trying to put out fires at work. And it hurt my recovery cycle for before the meet um, but nonetheless like I wasn't gonna let that deter me and um, I went in and I had to cut a little bit of weight uh, to make my to make my weight for the meet and uh, so the only way that well not the only way the easiest way for me to do that was to do a dry fast um, and if you know me, like long-term fasting is something I don't agree with. Um, I don't know any species that will fast to the point of weakening their systems, um, to the point where you can't defend yourself and take care of yourself. That is not uh, something that biologically happens outside of the human realm. And people have made like comments about bears. <laughs> bears have really different physiology from humans. And um, if you look at bear mortality, mortality, their highest mortality is when they come out of hibernation, so when they're in the long fasted state. So that says enough to me. Um, but I do believe that there is enough uh, evidence that we evolved not eating every day. Yeah, like I've been watching a lot of like 
different documentaries about indigenous people and one was about one of the most recently um, contacted Brazilian tribes and one of the things that really struck me was when they talked about eating and that they often eating and sleeping they often went three to four days without food and they often didn't sleep at night so those go against like some things were told like there's this huge movement in fruitarianism and veganism that says like you have to sleep for 12 hours a day and it's during the dark and that humans have always done that bullshit um it, it, this one documentary wasn't the last or the first thing that i've read where we humans aren't as diurnal as people want to make us out to be like we evolved having to be awake at night and maybe and and there and lies some of the importance of tribal structure because you could rotate who didn't sleep and then other people could rest but it's been going on forever that humans don't sleep at night because you that's when predators and uh, tribal raiders and and all sorts of problems happen in the dark so Anyhow, getting a little long-winded with that, but what really struck me was hearing them talk about how they often went three to four days without eating. And I think if you look at the science that looks at that kind of short, cyclical, short-term fasting, that it really matches the evolution of our physiology. So I am really uh, have been doing more and more intermittent fasting and um, feeling better and better with that. So I did my first dry fast in preparation for this meet. I went um, 38 hours without eating or drinking anything and most people do their first dry fast at 24 hours. Um, I not only dry fasted but I did sauna while I was dry fasting and it was a really great experience. Only at one point did I get really thirsty at about hour 8 or 6 and then I think my body switched over into some other kind of system or started like tapping fat for water and I actually felt after 24 hours really clear and I had been sweating and I had been active and moving and I didn't feel dizzy I didn't feel super thirsty but I didn't feel quite as dynamic as I normally am so I definitely like there was a a cap to my output and I think it really had to do with uh, thermal regulation in the body. Once I hit a certain level of heat my energy just kind of was like no we can't go that high we don't have the resources to deal with it. Um, so I dry fasted, I made weight, uh, I unfortunately stayed up for 24 hours before I came in for my weigh-in because I had to drive down there and then I was awake all night and, and just getting ready for travel like I took and uh, to, went to Europe uh, after the meet. So it was just kind of everything got crazy and it was not an ideal setup for the meet. Uh, but nonetheless, I made weight and I went in and I took, yeah, first again for my age and weight and I set three state records. learned a lot about coming in and being 100% prepared for a meet. I knew it wasn't going to be an ideal situation, but it was just the circumstances and I just wanted to like push myself to push through and perform anyhow. Uh, I met my goal, which was to go down there and to set the state records. Uh, I really wanted to qualify for nationals and I could have qualified for nationals in the deadlift. <laughs> Was a, a snafu in my numbers 
somehow between my coach and the guy running the table, and it should have been 363, um, and they put in 336. So a little bit of issue there, um, lessons learned, and uh, I have work to do. I had some problems with my form. My walkouts on my squats were mediocre at best. I'm totally restructuring my bench right now. Um, I need to bench as flat-footed, and I have been learning with my toes on the ground, which I think is something from bike racing, because when you race, you're constantly on the balls of your feet, so being flat-footed is not very comfortable for me. So I have some work to do there. And I have another meet coming up in November, which I will be not traveling after. Like, I literally left for Europe the day after this meet, so everything was really super chaotic. Um, I have another meet coming up in November, and I will see what I can do about uh, reapproaching that qualification for nationals and uh, setting state records. And I'm going to uh, turn 45. And so I'll be in the next age category so I can set another state record. So it was a great experience there. And um, I think it just goes to show like where I'm at now is leagues, leagues better. I'm doing exactly what I have in mind for goals. I am making appropriate gains and really having a good time and actually feeling so much better. And uh, somebody said, you know, oh my god, you're looking younger and younger. And uh, this has been commented on my social media as well. I just want to say thanks. Like, yeah, it's absolutely true. And somebody was posting, you know, I'm seeing, I'm in a, like a vegan recovery social group just to talk to other people's experience and see some of the people who are coming out of the woodwork. And it's a, it's a closed group, so some people are being kind of secretive. But one of the pictures that was brought up was... You know, this guy, Robbie, who's your type 1 diabetic. And Robbie's a good guy. This isn't like anything against him. But, you know, here's a picture of a 30-year-old. It just illustrates all the things that that I have been saying and will reiterate again. is like the collagen structure, the fatty acids, like all of these kind of nutrients that are difficult to get on a vegan diet and... People just look super aged and stressed. They're, and when you start looking like that, your body is stressed inside. Like you have so many collagen proteins and connective tissue inside that hold everything together in your brain and in your organs. And if you're not healthy, like if your skin's not looking good, if you're not looking vibrant, then your performance isn't going to be there either. And so I would just say for me, I noticed the difference in the performance. And I'm going to leave this video with some outtakes of recent things, including food, the garden, lifting, and a little bit of travels in Europe. Let me know if you have questions, comments, let it rip. I hope everyone's well, and if you are a vegan who's unhealthy or an ex-vegan, don't be afraid. Come out and tell your story. Just tell your story. Nobody can rewrite that for you. <laughs> So new 